Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Red Delta Project podcast, your resource for helping you break free of the stressful, dogmatic diet and exercise rat race, helping you get in the best shape of your life on your own terms. Matt Schifferly here, founder of the Red Delta Project and author of the book Fitness Independence. I've got a super treat for you today. I am speaking with my man, Dorian, over here. He's the founder of Old School Calisthenics, and he is one of the most jack dudes you will find on the internet from mostly using body weight training. I mean, you really got to look up pictures of this guy. He's like Superman with pull-ups. So I've got him here right on the call. He's got some unusual methods. He's got some neat uh, takes on how to train for body weight to build muscle, build up raw strength. So let me just turn it right on over. Dorian, welcome to the Red Delta Project. And uh, yeah, how you doing, man? I'm very good. I'm excited for this. And Thank you so much for this invitation <laughs> to participate in your podcast. I'm very happy to do it. Very Hello good. to everybody. <laughs> and uh, much, much respect for you and your followers. Wonderful. Hello. Wonderful. Let's just jump right into it. Let's get a little of the history. Have you been doing this stuff for very long or have you been an athlete all your life? What's your story? Well, uh, my story, it's uh, very interesting because I used to be a professional athlete when I was very young. I was a professional swimmer uh, since I was a kid and up until high school. Now I am 27 years old and uh, believe it or not, uh, up to this age, I, I already been through two body transformations because uh, after I swam, for like uh, five years at least, I did uh, some gym, I was lifting weights, and I had a pretty athletic body, pretty muscular, and then uh, a period of total sedentarism, like for more than five years came, where I lost absolutely everything. From an athlete that could swim uh, 10 kilometers straight, I wasn't able to jog more than uh, two kilometers without collapsing. So that was kind of a very powerful uh, transformation for me because I was stunned. I was I was amazed, man. How could I? Uh, how could this be possible to to lose everything you you build in years in only I don't know uh, only a couple of two three two, three years. Wow. So that was interesting. And uh, this is my, my background as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And then I came across calisthenics. Uh, after this period ended, I was like, okay, I got to change uh, my situation. I want to look good again. But I don't know how to do it exactly. So the only thing that was there for me was the gym actually and uh, running on the athletic field mm -hmm. so because I had no money for the gym um, I was like okay I have some money for the first month but then what I'm gonna do because I had no job no nothing so okay I can't go in a gym pay for one month and then just quit so I decided to go outside and train in public parks and whatever I could get my hand on like a pull-up bar Mm -hmm. I found on the athletic field a set of parallel bars where I did some dips, a pull-up bar, and I had a running track and all that. And I just started to do exercises until a friend of mine said to me, oh, so you're doing calisthenics. What? What is that? <laughs> you know calisthenics, there are a lot of people doing it. In, uh, in uh, online, you can find a lot more. And I was like, you seriously? I mean, I'm just doing pull-ups, dips, and some squats. I don't even know how to train. And he was like, yeah, ch check this thing up. And then I came across this beautiful sport, and I just got in love with it because I was amazed by the the, the exercises the, the, that, that those athletes could do, like Hannibal for King. Mm -hmm. That was the first one that came to me. And I was like, wow. Wow, this thing is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, let me go in the in, in the house because there is a background noise. Sure, sure. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot of times when people like us, we find calisthenics, it's not almost like we're looking for it, but it's almost like it finds us. 
uh, due to yeah. a situation of necessity. And I think a lot of times it's funny because when people sometimes fall into body weight training, they come to it in a situation where they don't have access to the typical big gym resources. So it's like, well, I'll just do what I can with what I've got. And yeah. I think in some ways that limitation is a benefit because you don't get so distracted right. from all yeah. of the fluff moves and all of the stuff going on out there. It's You get right down to the basics and you stay on that for a long time. And that's how you build up the foundation and the stability for your exactly. success. So it yeah. might seem like a down when you start, but it's actually a great benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because... The, the exercises, the advanced calisthenics exercises I've seen then were like, okay, I got to try this. And then I went back on the athletic field. Uh, I grabbed the bar. Okay, let's do a muscle up. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> I can't do this. So I was very skinny uh, in that period. I had like 72 kilograms. I think that is 145 pounds, something like that. Wow. So now I'm with almost 40 pounds heavier than, than then. Nicely so, done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you, you're one of the few guys out there that I, at least I know of that are really teaching like me, like using calisthenics as a way to build serious muscle. And you yeah. believe that it's a good way to do so. What are some of the top tips that you would give somebody if they're like, I want to use calisthenics, I want to build muscle. What would you give them if you like met them at a party, some of your top tips? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I think is very important is to actually prioritize this instead of everything else. I mean, I think that in calisthenics, you can't, focus on skills on building muscles on flexibility and everything all at once i mean especially in the beginning mm. because the 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 training exer the exercises are different so you must decide well i want to build muscle so what should i do well that is a good good question you can't train for front uh, lever if you want to have uh, big guns <laughs> because you're gonna waste a lot of time uh, building that particular exercise and that particular strength and you're not going to be focused on what needs to be done. Uh, so this is my, my first recommendation. And then comes the actual plan. Okay, what should I do? And what I noticed from my experience, basic training is always working. You, you just need to uh, add all the very basic exercises. That's it. Like three, four pull-up variations, three, four push-up variations, dips on parallel bars, uh, squat variations, sprints, running, jumping the rope, all these basic exercises. I think they are more than enough to build the, the body you want naturally. Mm -hmm. So these this are regarding the training. And then the method comes in a... In, uh, in question again okay so I have these exercises I don't know how do I train with them so what I notice in this particular uh, uh, thing mm -hmm. I think you must work for for more I mean some sort of high volume but that doesn't mean you always do hundreds of reps you can do high volume with with the calisthenics as well I mean as long as you exhaust your muscles, you train hard, they're going to respond eventually. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me train pull-ups two times a week, my legs two times a week, my chest two times a week. And that was my philosophy since the beginning. And I was ended up like training uh, five times a week. And I included everything, every muscle group to be trained at least uh, two times. So... It's, it's always coming back down to the basics. And I find this yeah. particularly the case with building muscle, too. Um, I think a lot of people have trouble building muscle because it's such vanilla training. It's such basic yeah. training because you watch even bodybuilders in the gym. We had um, 
uh, I didn't know this, but uh, the uh, former Mr. Universe used to live across the street from the gym that I worked at. And one day he came in and I was like, oh, I get to watch like Mr. Universe train. Like, let's see what he does and stuff. And it was nothing at all special. I yeah. mean, you would be bored if you were watching exactly. him work out. It's nothing like these exactly. YouTube videos where you see the, the guys are screaming and all this this fancy stuff. He like just parks his gym bag by a weight bench and starts doing inclined dumbbell presses. And yeah, 20 minutes be- later, I check in. He's dumbbell bench presses. And that was his workout. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's nothing. There's nothing to it. But that simple yeah. addition of reps basic movements, basic, exactly. nothing fancy nothing. kind of thing. So, nothing. you know, if Mr. Universe is doing that, then <laughs> if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. Yeah. We're just doing it with calisthenics. You, you want to know what's hilarious? Mm. Uh, here in Romania, uh, calisthenics is not something very accepted. Not oh, really? Performs. So we are very few, like hundreds in the whole country of uh, 70 millions. So that's pretty... I mean, <laughs> almost <laughs> nobody is doing it. So wow. I'm one of the pioneers, I think, mm-hmm. for this sport. And I was attending this weekend uh, the street workout meeting, and mm-hmm. they were always jumping on bars. And uh, then the guy that organized everything said, okay, so now it's time for you, Adorian, present your thing, do your uh, show on mm-hmm. the bars. And I was like, but I only do pull-ups and push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to be impressed. <laughs> Because they're doing 360 levers, all that. So, yep. Okay, I, I needed to do some muscle ups and <laughs> levers too, just to, to let them know, okay, I can do some stuff too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I invite you all to do a very quick but extremely exhausted workout. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> they were very nice and uh, participating. But what I've noticed, uh, these street workout guys, I mean, all these moves are like, man, you need incredible strength to do them. And I would, yeah, you need. But when I put them to sets and reps, I noticed that there is, man, they couldn't do it properly. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't, I could notice that there is a lack in, in this particular training. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it is the foundation. For them, it is fine. But they were skinny. They were looking good, but they were skinny. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I find it so fascinating how calisthenics has changed over even the, the short time I've been practicing it. Because when I got into it and I would tell people, yeah, I do calisthenics now, the old adage there was, so you do crunches and high rep push-ups and yeah. things like things you, you do in like gym class or like warming up in a martial arts class or something. So that's what people yeah. used to think calisthenics are. But now you've got yeah. street calisthenics uh, and the, exactly. the quote sports of it, where people are doing the the, the backflips and all the f- fancy stuff that that people are it's getting just, judged it's on. It's great. It's just great. Yeah. It's awesome. It's so people are thinking awesome, yeah. now that's calisthenics. But I think the approach that you and I use has always been a third option entirely, which is more bodybuilder style where it's like exactly here's pull-ups exactly. it doesn't look like anything fancy i mean how many times people have asked me matt show off your workout show off your workout i'm like okay if you want to fall asleep go right <laughs> you know it's nothing <laughs> it's exactly. not fancy it doesn't look like anything i li- i i did videos of my workout with showing rest and everything and people are like well this wasn't doesn't look very much fun i'm like well it, you know i enjoy doing it but yeah it's not fancy but that's what builds the muscle. That's what packs on the, the weight. And you're finding the same thing for yourself. So let's get a little bit more into your favorite exercise. You mentioned like three or four push-up, pull-up variations. What do you like to do, Adorian? Well, I definitely like wide grip pull-ups. I think this is the main exercise that will uh, target absolutely everything that is in the upper body. Mm-hmm. Your guns, your lats the shoulders as well. People often ask me, so how do you train your shoulders? Well, you train them by consequence. You don't need to do, I don't know, specific workout for them. Doing some pull-ups and push-ups, dips, even handstand push-ups, it's more than enough to, to build big shoulders. Mm. So this is one particular, particular exercise that I love. I also 
love the handstand push-ups against the wall mm-hmm. because I don't I don't want to focus on balance. I want my entire uh, the entire resistance to fall on my shoulders. So this is important for muscle building, I think. Mm-hmm. Then I like jump squats a lot. I like sprints. I think that the key to have bigger legs is to also uh, train with sprints, hill sprints, long distance sprints, everything. Well, if you're a street workout guy, that then this will be a problem because the bigger your legs are, because the the weight, the, the legs are heavier actually than the rest of the body. So if you're going to do street workout, having bigger legs will not going to help you. Mm. But if you want to look better and uh, respect the proportions, you know, having uh, big legs and big uh, arms, not the other way around, like Johnny Bravo. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are my, my favorite exercises. I also like uh, regular push-ups and uh, leg raises. I think these are my top my top ones. Mm-hmm. And then some couple of variations. Yeah, nothing fancy, nothing fancy, but... Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. I mean, guys uh, came with me at... Uh, came, came, came with me to work out and I was like, okay, prepare to be amazed. I'm going to do pull-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, seriously, man? And you're going to build muscle with this? This were like four years ago when everybody told me, everybody in the gym told me, like, man, don't do this thing. I mean, you're never going to achieve nothing with it. Come lift, I don't know, bench press and all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that doesn't work because it is. But I was like, okay, you just gave me one more reason to prove that you're wrong. Mm. That calisthenics can actually be very good for building muscles as well. So I did it. I did it. And then I went to the gym to prove them that I don't need to, to bench press to be able to bench press a lot. And I and I think I even did it better than them <laughs> without even doing it in, in this period. That so, is beautiful. Uh, yeah, but this is not the only things regarding muscle building, as you already know it. it here comes nutrition, here comes sleep, recovery. It's it's a discipline, actually. Mm-hmm. Without it, I mean, when I had my, most of my gains were during my most disciplined time. Now, because I am uh, partying a lot, I'm traveling a lot, I'm meeting a lot of people, I can't recover properly and as a consequence, I think I'm not progressing anymore. So it doesn't matter the level you reach if you're not sleeping, if you're not, uh, if you do not prioritize this, then you can't have results. I mean, it's is that simple? Is that simple? You can't do hundred things a day and expect to have uh, great results in muscle building. This is my opinion, and I think you can agree with me yeah. on this. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm getting now back to the importance of uh, sleep in particular, because that's always been my Achilles heel is getting sleep as my job is usually you get up early, you stay up late uh, kind of thing. And sleep is often taking a, 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 a downturn on it. But I'm recently saying, no, I've got to get to bed at this time each night. And yeah, you're right. It's a discipline. It's a discipline as a whole. You can't be really disciplined with your workouts, but very lazy about your sleep and diet and still expect to get very far. Um, Maybe when you're younger or when you're starting off, you can make some of the newbie gains, but especially as you're getting older, like I just turned 40 and I know like if I miss some decent sleep two nights in a row, (laughs) forget it. There's, there's no hoping. I can definitely tell that I, that I don't have the same metabolism like I used to have when I was uh, 20, 21. Now I'm 27, and I think my, my metabolism is a lot slower. So this is also a reason why I gain some body fat. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, heavier than I was. And uh, it has to do with this thing, especially. So mm-hmm. here comes nutrition again, sleeping, discipline. So, I don't know, I think, I bet you have a lot of plus 30 years, guys. 
So if they are listening right now, I want to tell them, please be as disciplined as possible. It's harder over 30 to build some serious mess, mm -hmm. but it can be done. We all know people that proved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the the physiological process of you know protein synthesis and building muscle and stuff, yeah. science has proven that never stops. They've even taken very elderly citizen, uh, senior citizens, and they give them light dumbbells and stuff, and it's proven like nope, they they still build muscle, just fine and dandy. It's it's not like they're handicapped; they can't build muscle even though they're eighty, ninety years old. So we always have that potential. It's just what it takes to tap into that potential may be a little bit more strict or disciplined as we get older. Um, so let's, let's shift gears a little bit. We're talking training. Let's uh, go into a little bit more of some of your nutrition and dietary strategies. You've got a brand new book out uh, pertaining yeah. to nutrition, weight loss uh, specifically. What are some of yeah. your best lessons that you can give us in that area? Okay, so uh, regarding fat loss, I think nutrition is the main pillar here, the main, the main stone. Um, what I used to do, because before starting calisthenics, I had actually a one-year training where I only ran. I jogged a lot and I ran, like almost every day. I went out there because I was out of shape, I was pretty fat. And like I told before, I couldn't run two kilometers without collapsing. And I was devastated by this. I mean, how? Man, I can't even imagine. I, I used to, to, to swim a lot more. So I had this motivation. Let's, let's do this. Because having the experience with swimming, I knew that if I want to lose weight, I'm going to need to do a lot of cardio exercise. So running was... The best option for me or the skipping rope which i didn't know back then so i went every every day there and build up my physical condition from two kilometers from two three four for three kilometers and and started to add more time or more distance each time challenging a bit myself so okay if i did two kilometers in this time now let's do a little bit more uh more distance maybe and then after I built this condition, I also started to sprint and all these things helped me a lot among with nutrition, of which I will talk right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I was doing was actually replacing the, the refined sugars mostly. I mean, I was more focused on whole foods like uh, brown rice. I started to uh, check the food label. And there was the fiber uh, intake that you get from uh, different rices. And I was like amazed to notice that brown rice have uh, twice as much fiber than the white rice. And then I knew, okay, so this is a refined carbohydrate. So I need, I need not only to reduce my calorie intake, which I didn't count at all, and I and I think nobody needs to count calories as long as they're reducing the sizes of their macros every day, just a bit. If I were, if I was eating this much yesterday, now let's eat a little bit less, like less carbohydrates, a little bit less protein, a little bit less uh, fats, and then as you get uh, accustomed to this, you just uh, continue uh, reducing the the macros, which are the calories. So this is what, what I was doing. I also eliminated the uh, dairy products, no milk, no nothing, not even yogurt. So um, that actually worked for me. Then I eliminated any kind of uh, animal fats and I was focused only on unsaturated fats. I was eating, eating a lot of nuts and, and this uh, kind of foods. Uh, then what I also did was the to change the cooking methods, like using less oil. Mm -hmm. I also uh, wrote an article on my blog where I put there some examples, and I have this even in my fat loss book, where I showed uh, pasta, like uh, cooked in different ways. One was like 
maybe 800 calories and the other one was maybe 300 calories at the same uh, at the same size at the same volume mm. so you you got to you got to uh, steam the the food you got to boil the food but i think these healthy cooking methods are are the key as well and then the sugar table the the sucrose you know the white sugar that needs to be eliminated entirely so i think these were the main things that i did in nutrition uh, that had the major impact and as uh, regarding carbohydrates i replaced white potatoes with uh, sweet potatoes i replaced white rice with uh, brown rice then i replaced i added beans because i needed fiber intake a lot more lentils chickpeas uh, everything that was gluten free went just fine for me i eliminated uh wheat like from bread and all that i also chose my pasta to be from corn and from rice these these things mm. and it worked and i extended the fasting period like if i had my last meal in the day at uh, 10 p.m then my first meal the next day uh, was at least uh, 12 or 1 p.m so the more is is better having at least uh 12 hours fasting uh, period i think it's great for fat loss it, mm. it works just fine one of the things I'm picking up on with your strategies too, and I see this a lot when people are more successful with losing weight, is you're you're mentioning like I do this and I do this and I do this and I so you have this very multifaceted approach where you're paying attention to multiple things at the same yeah. time. You're not relying on just it's carbohydrates. Yeah. It's it's a it's holistic a approach. And so you're nope. covering many bases. You know, it's like when people ask me, oh, tell me your routine for muscle building. Man, it's not about a particular routine. It's never about one thing only. If you don't uh, take a few steps back and watch this, I don't know, as a macro perspective, then you're going to fail, mm. you know, because there is no perfect routine for fat loss or for uh, muscle building. I mean, you have to try a lot of things, but using the same basic principles. If you respect the basic principles, and work with them, then you'll then you'll gain a lot. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say it better myself. These are great tips right here. And the thing I also like about it is this is stuff that you're doing, like practical application in your yeah. life. This isn't something you read in a book or on a blog, no. and you're saying, "Hey it's guys, I read sense. this." This is your life, and you've done it twice. You've transformed your body twice where most people are struggling to do it even once so obviously there's a lot of practical information that you're giving out uh in this knowledge it's not just well science has shown x y and z it's look guys this is what's happening in the real world the practical exactly. knowledge i i always tell them i only teach common sense i don't say nothing scientific i i mean i don't think of myself that i'm very very uh, cultivated in this area i i did read a lot but uh i don't i don't have all, all the answers i just know that what is common sense uh works mm -hmm. beautiful i like it man there's a lot of great stuff there um how can people reach out to you if they want to find more blog email well i am very responsive they can reach me up on instagram they can reach me up by sending me an email on the website old school calisthenic my uh old school minus calisthenic at ro for romania mm -hmm. uh, but they can also send me a message through my facebook page it doesn't matter i am always replying i'm always helping and i never ask nothing in return i i like when people reach me up and i am able to actually offer them some advice it's it's one thing that I enjoyed since the beginning because when I started out this, I, very few were teaching it like I'm doing it or you're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. And you've got a couple of, of books and products out that people can take a look at too. What, what do you have out that people can buy? Well, I have, I have my uh, calisthenics ebook, the high volume calisthenics workouts. That is a paid product. I included there all of my routines since I started. Absolutely everything I, I did so far. So I, because people was always like, hey, Adorian, would you send me your routines? And I was like, okay, let's make a book. Uh, with my actual workouts, but uh, the people should know that I have a totally free program for beginners. If you can do zero pull-ups, zero push-ups, zero dips, and zero squats, you can you can get that. And I think it's more than enough. Reading some articles, some vlogs of mine, having that book, it's more than enough to to start and even build an amazing body. Wonderful, wonderful. And you've got a new weight loss book out too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have the fresh ideas for losing weight I, I with nutrition and calisthenics. And I, I name it fresh ideas because I thought like, okay, so I teach common sense. It's like new in this sort of area because there is no diet. It's not hard at all. You just need to be aware of your uh, choices. I mean, you don't choose blindfolded. You mm-hmm. always need to be in control of what you're doing. So I am I am in a restaurant, I want to order something, I want to be full, I want to get nutrients, but I also need to check up check up on my uh my body fat percentage. So having my uh common sense theory, you can learn how to actually do this the proper way. Very good. Awesome. I'll be putting links on to everything that you mentioned on the website uh, where the blog post is and in the show notes. If you uh, are listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, head over to Red Delta Project and just type in old school calisthenic, Adorian, um, building muscle calisthenics, any of that, it'll pop right up or just check out the blog page and you can reference to all these sorts of things. Parting words, Adorian, if someone's getting started right now, what's the one best piece of advice you can give them? To, to be patient and not and not get frustrated like I did. Mm. I was so angry because I didn't do what I wanted to do. And don't put any deadlines there because the body has its own uh, clock. I wanted to do the muscle up in three months. I couldn't do it. Then I set it for six months. It didn't happen. And <laughs> this, <laughs> this thing actually uh followed me back like i never managed to accomplish my goals within the time i gave me so if you want to do something great you must prepare to do it for your entire life it's it's a way of living it's not okay i want to look good now because the summer is coming or i want to impress women or i want to feel better myself because the sport itself does not make you feel better the action because you're involved into actions physical action is the one that will make you feel better about yourself and of course if you're patient and perseverant then the results will come and your self-esteem will be uh higher so these are my 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 rules to to see everything as a system do little changes day after day and then just be very patient and don't think for a moment that, I don't know, maybe your program is, is good. You don't need to follow me or, I don't know, anybody else to have results. I think that is exactly the last thing that it matters, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, doing one routine or another. It's more about how hard you train and how much you respect these principles. Wonderful. Awesome. Words of advice. Everybody, please check out Adorian's stuff. Check out his website. Facebook, he puts up some amazing things. Check out his pictures. The dude is jacked as all hell. And obviously this stuff is working great. And uh, it's I'm learning a lot. I think everybody can benefit from this stuff. Please go check out his stuff. So if you have questions, uh, you can uh, email Adorian directly. Again, I'll have the link on reddeltaproject.com. You can email me, reddeltaproject at gmail.com with questions. And I will talk to you folks next week. Dorian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. And I'll thank you a lot. Excellent. (laughs) I'll talk to you guys next week. Till then, be fit, live free.